my shield of faith, I envision it like these cuffs. And that when a fiery dart comes, I'm all shink, shink, and they just bounce right off. Nothing can touch them. Let me tell you a true story about a 13 year old girl named Sylvia. She grew up in communist Romania and her teachers and classmates called her crazy girl because she believed in God. Sylvia's pastor knew about persecution and he knew that there was great danger in being a Christian. And he prepared the children of his church and he told them, it doesn't matter how young you are, you can have a deep heart knowledge that there is a God and he does care for you. And Sylvia pondered this and she thought, my parents believe in God and my church believes in God, but I don't know if I do. You have to understand, she was so poor that she had to share shoes with her bigger brother, depending on who needed them the most at that moment. They couldn't all travel to church at the same time because they couldn't all afford the bus fare. She had to go live with her aunt and uncle in a different city because there were times when her parents couldn't afford to feed her. What kind of a God was that? She had to ask herself. And so one night she prayed and said, God, if you are real, I need you to prove it to me. And so she asked the unthinkable. She said, I want you to give me my own pair of shoes and a sweater and a coat that are just mine. And she prayed that he would do something special so that she would know it was from him. And the next morning, nothing happened. And the next day, nothing happened. And a week had passed and nothing happened. And a little while later, her father came home from work with a package. And a package was a big deal, so the whole family gathered around. And typically, their tradition was before they opened the package, they would pray and thank God for whatever it was that was in it. And they opened it up. The first thing she saw was a little pair of high heel shoes with a little design in the front that no self-respecting brother would ever wear. And she whispered, they're mine. And her mom looked at her and said, Sylvia. And yet when she tried it on, they fit not too big and not too little. She was so excited as they pulled out the next item and it was a sweater, a soft gray sweater, not a pullover that a boy would wear, but a cardigan with little pearls. And she knew that it was for her. And so they held it up and it was too small for one sister and too big for the other, and yet it fit her just perfectly. And by then she already knew what the third item was in the box. It was a beautiful burgundy coat that when she tried on just hung right below her skirt. It was just her size. And it was at that moment that she realized that the very special thing that she had asked God for to show that it was him had happened. She had never told him her size. He knew. She understood that God loved her personally. And it was important that she did because of what would happen years down the road. But before you can ever defeat worry, you have to have faith. And it was faith that Sylvia needed when she found herself under interrogation in prison for living her Christian faith in Romania. And it was the God of her faith that rescued her when she was taken to a prison camp for trying to leave the country. And while she was there, a guard checked her ID and recognizing her name, pulled her aside and said, you need to come with me. And he said, do you know who I am? And she said, no, I don't. And he said, you're the crazy girl. You're the crazy girl I went to school with. He said, we share a birthday, we're twins. I never wanted anybody in school to know it because I didn't want them to think I shared a birthday with the crazy girl. I'm so glad that I found you. They told me to get rid of you. You must be really important because they had to pay an entire cargo bin of grain just to get you in this prison camp. And she remembered the verse, the angel of the Lord and campeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. There weren't a lot of Bibles in Romania, but the ones that did come across the border 
Sylvia was transporting them. The Bibles were so valuable because they provided truth and hope and that faith. And so she read her Bible and she memorized her Bible and she developed a strong shield of faith. My shield of faith, I imagine it as impenetrable and it's attached to my arm. And so when a fiery dart comes, I just raise it and shink. And with every verse that I memorize and with every battle I fight, it gets stronger. It's like the verse kind of absorbs into this awesome supernatural shield and it quenches more and more fiery darts and only grows stronger and stronger. But sadly, I'm a weenie. I really am. Not so much now. I have really gained a lot of strength and courage and faith over the years. But naturally, I'm a weenie. I can't even tell you all of the things that I've been afraid of. It's pretty ridiculous. And so when I come to you talking about worry and overcoming worry, I've been there. I have read the books of Living Fearlessly and I've tried to have a positive mindset. I've tried to rationalize why I shouldn't be afraid. If you haven't watched my video on how to overcome anxiety, you should totally do that if you're struggling with these fears and worry. I personally don't think that, that anxiety and worry are the same thing, but they're certainly related because it deals with things outside of our control. And so I'm going to tell you my secret. What helped me stop worrying? Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. You have to get your mind off the problem and start praying more. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The word shall is so important because it's a promise. And it's the promises that are so strong when it comes to your shield of faith. Because God is not a liar. And if you go to him and you said, you promised me peace. I am doing what you say. Then you can rest knowing that you will have it. And so you need to go to the Lord in prayer. You need to share with him everything that concerns you. You also need to give thanks. And when we start thanking God for everything that he is, and, and we look through history and we take time to remember how big he is and what he has brought you through thus far, we start realizing that our problems and our greatest fears are no big thing for him. That being said, I'm not a big advocate of doing nothing and then letting God do everything. I don't think that's very biblical. In Proverbs 21, 31, it says, The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. You ought to live wisely and walk circumspectly, knowing what's going on around, like a soldier. But Psalm 127, verse 2 says, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. There comes a point when you've done what you can, and that's it. Safety is of the Lord. I love when King David wrote in Psalm 27, 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One of the key verses in my shield of faith is, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thine heart. That is a promise. But God knows the desires of our heart far deeper and better than we ever will, is because God knows just what it takes in your life to conform you into the image of Christ. And when we surrender to that, and when our heart's desire is to be like Christ, then when we close our eyes and think about our greatest fear, we're more easily able to hand it off to Him and say, 
Lord, I will do the best that I can. But if it is your will for this to happen, then I would just ask that you help me to please you and to bring you glory throughout it. Faith, my friend. Faith. And if you haven't subscribed, you should do that right now. Have a great day.